clients when we get to working with exponential functions, we start looking at something called compound interest. So what I'd like to do in this example is to show you some um, different situations with compound interest. For this example, I have $7,000 that's deposited into an account that earns 3% interest. Find the amount in the account after 15 years if it is compounded. First way we'll go is with monthly, second with annually, and then last with continuously. Now there's several different interest formulas that you have to pick from to get the correct one for the scenario that you have. I've written three of them up here. So one is A is equal to P times the parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Now this is a compound interest formula if you have a specific number of compounding periods per year. P is the principal, the amount you deposit into the account. R is the interest rate in decimal form, so we have to go from the percent form to the decimal form. N is the number of compounding periods per year. And then same number N here, and T is the time in years. Now, once we get this whole value out, that's equal to A, and A is the amount that's in the account after that time period with that compounding at that rate. The next formula that I have is A is equal to P times E to the RT. And E is that number 2.71828, etc. There's a key on your calculator that is the E value that you can use in calculating this. This is the compound um, interest formula for when it's compounded continuously. So if it doesn't have a specific number of compound periods a year, but it says continuously, that's when you want to use this form. So P is the principal you deposit, E is the numerical value 2.71828, etc. R is your interest rate again in decimal form, and then T is your time in years. And then the next one is A is equal to P plus P times R times T. So this is the formula that gives the amount in the account if you have simple interest. No compounding happening. They just pay you on what that original principal was. So P is the principal that you deposit, and then it's plus your interest, which is the principal times rate times time. And again, there the rate would be in decimal form. So let's see what we have in each of these cases. So the first one with the setup is monthly. Well, if you're compounding it monthly, that means thinking about how many months are in a year. There's 12 months in a year. So N is equal to 12. And I have a specific number of compounding periods. So I am going to use this formula. A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R over N to the NT power. So for our specific problem, we have $7,000 that's deposited, so that is our principal times 1 plus R. We have to change our rate into decimal form. So here our rate is 3%, but remember when you go from percent to decimal, you have to move the decimal point two places over to the left. So that's going to be 0 0.03. Divide by N is 12. And it's to the 12 times T in years, 15 years, power. Um, just as a side note, if they tell you that it's left in there for, say, 18 months, then you'd need to change that to years. So that would be 1.5 years for if it said 18 months and your rate was annual. Okay, so that gives me my formula. Now, we can key this in all together. On our calculator, we want to go 7,000 times, open a parenthesis, 1 plus 0 0.03, divide by 12, close a parenthesis, and then take it to the, and if your calculator sits up in the exponent and stays up there in little with the way that it's programmed, you can go 12 times 15 and get the right value. If your calculator just gives you that caret and 
key for raising to a power, then you need to open parentheses and go 12 times 15 and close the parentheses on that. But when you calculate that through, you'll get that there'll be approximately $10,972.02 when you round that off. Okay, let's look at the next one, annually. That means it's just going to compound it once a year. So N is 1. So my amount is 7,000 times 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 1 to the 1 times 15 power. And again, you can just key that through. And when you key that through and get your value, you'll get that it's $10,900. $5.77. Part C is continuously. Now when it says continuously, I'm not going to use the compound interest formula when I have a specific number of compound periods per year. I'm going to use the formula that is the limit as that number of compound periods go to infinity and it transitions into this formula. So our A, our amount in our account, is the principal e, P times E to the RT power is what we're going to use. So that's 7,000 times E to the 0 .03 is your rate and time is 15 years. And when you calculate that out, you get about $10,978.19. And make sure that you do go ahead and key those through to get see that you get the value. Also, again, remember, when you do the E key, um, where you find this on your calculator, a lot of times if you see an LN key, then right above that it has E. So you go second in that button to get it. If it doesn't put it up as an exponent, then you need to put the caret key and then again, grab that in parentheses in order to have it multiply together. But these are examples of compound interest and one of the applications that we commonly see when we first start working with exponential functions.